Lick's Adventure in Faringa Part 2. Written by Idano. Please subscribe for more audio stories. When Lix the giant axolot got back to the factories, she was surprised to see that they were bigger than she'd originally thought. It seemed the buildings she had seen when she first visited them were only the outermost a part of a huge industrial complex and storage system she was only now seeing, with several hatches that had been hidden under a layer of dirt opening to reveal various ships, drones, and other military equipment inside, the largest of which was a medium-sized battleship about half as big as Lix. The whole operation was much bigger than she had ever expected, especially considering the level of tech she had seen in most of the city. These weapons were way more advanced than anything else she'd seen here, so much so that she didn't believe these people could be the ones behind them. Were they slave labor being used to put these ships together? And if so, who were the ones behind all this? As much as Lix would have liked answers to these questions, right then she had to deal with these weapons before any more of them were activated to come after her. Raising her foot overhead, she slammed it down in a huge, earth-shaking stomp, crushing a slowly rising drone under her sole. More were still coming up, though, it seemed she was in for another battle. Down on the ground, those Feringans who had been working in the factories ran outside, scrambling to get away from the chaotic fight between the giant monster and the various drones. It was hard to know where to run, though, as the battle took the monster from one end of the factory complex to the other in just a few steps, often cutting off people's escape routes without any warning and leaving them to scramble in some other direction. Then there were the stray lasers from the drones which weren't quite as destructive, but still a big issue. Soon the place was so covered in rubble that most of the roads were blocked off and they couldn't tell where to go, so instead they hunkered down anywhere that looked safe, waiting for the whole thing to wind down and hoping that they wouldn't be killed in all this destruction. The battle lasted a few minutes, with Lix destroying the drones with her hands, legs, and tail, not to mention her wrist laser. Finally it seemed there were no more of those pesky things left for her to deal with. Meaning she was free to destroy the rest of the factory at her leisure. At any other time she might have taken it slow and had some fun with it, but she really wasn't in the mood right then, especially knowing there might still be other weapons ready to activate and start attacking her. About half of the industrial complex was already destroyed, but that meant there was still the other half left to deal with. Focusing her attention on it, she started stomping around, meticulously destroying every piece of machinery or military equipment she could see, as well as any intact buildings around, grinding them all to dust under her feet. Though there were a bunch of tiny Feringans on the ground, she hardly paid them any attention at all, certainly not enough to go out of her way to avoid stepping on them, and not even enough to enjoy the feeling of their little bodies under her feet. She just let her bracelet protect them while she did what she had to do. The Feringans started running again when they saw her attention turn back to the factories, but they were so tiny that almost none of them could make it away in time before they were stomped into the ground, under the giant monster's dust-covered sols. Their little bodies left half-buried in the earth. Some of them ended up stuck to her sols, while others who had already been stuck to them fell off in turn. Eventually, Lix finished with crushing the last remaining building and stood breathing heavily in the middle of all the destruction. She felt her throat start to go dry from all this desert air, then looked up at the sky, holding a hand over her eyes so the sun wouldn't blind her. It was getting too hot for her now, and amphibian skin wouldn't be able to keep itself moist much longer. She frowned, seeing as she still hadn't found any sign of Ryung, the one thing she came here to do, but then she shrugged, figuring she could just revisit the planet again some other day, this time coming better prepared. Anyway, even though she had to be leaving soon, there was still one little thing she wanted to do first. Heading back into the city, she quickly scanned its surface to find a spot where the buildings were still mostly intact spared from all the surrounding destruction as if by a miracle. 
On the far end of that area were a bunch of Ferengans running away. Hey, wait up, you guys, she said, heading over to them. I just want to ask you a few questions. I promise nothing bad will happen to you. But after her latest rampage, almost no one was willing to stop and listen. She chased after these people for a bit, telling them she only wanted to talk to them, but eventually stopped as she noticed another group of people standing in place a bit to her left. She looked over and saw that there were about 50 Ferengans there, standing and waving to her. She walked over, then crouched besides them and looked them over, seeing that they were a bunch of the people she'd made friends with earlier, including the boy and his mother. Hello, little ones, she said. I wanted to ask some questions about the factories. Are there any of you who could answer them? The mother from earlier, a woman with short black hair, stepped forward. I'd be happy to answer any questions you have. Thanks, miss. Um, what should I call you? My name is May, and I was made to work in those factories for many months. All right, May. Tell me all you know about those factories, who runs them, and what they're being used for. A little over a year ago, some huge metal ships came down from the sky. We tried to fight against them, but their weapons were much stronger than anything we had ever seen before. Soon they offered to spare us if we surrendered and agreed to work for them. We knew we had no hope of beating them, so we accepted. Since that day, they set up these factories in many of our cities and forced us to work making their weapons for them, weapons they used to conquer other planets. By the way, Miss Lix, you're also from another planet, aren't you? That's right, I am. Why do you ask? Well, me and the others with me would like to ask if you could take us all away from here, back to your own planet. Please, Miss. We don't want to go on living under our current masters. You really want to leave? Why not stay now that I've destroyed all those weapons factories? Well, you kinda also destroyed most of our homes. May said, making Licks blush in embarrassment. But even leaving that aside, you only destroyed one of their factories. There's many more like this all over this planet and there's nothing stopping our masters from simply coming back and rebuilding it. Well, let them try. I'll deal with them the same as I deal with their war drones. Lick said, no, you don't understand. Those drones were some of the smaller weapons in their arsenal. They have much deadlier things to throw at you. You're strong, but I think even you couldn't stand against them and they're probably sending some of their bigger weapons over as we speak. Hmm. Well, maybe you're right. Either way, if you want to come along with me, I don't have any problem. Here, hop on, Lix said, lowering a hand to the ground. Little by little, the Ferengans climbed onto her hand, gradually filling it up until they were all standing on her open palm. Then Lix stood, looking them over. Okay, is everyone ready to leave? There isn't anything you need to do or to bring along before I go. The tiny people started muttering among themselves, making sure that there was nothing more they needed. Suddenly, one of them pointed to the sky behind Lick's head, yelling, Look out! Closing her hand around the tiny people and turning around, Lick saw a huge battleship hovering in his sky. It was much bigger than the one she'd seen in the factories, about as big a cross as her whole house. May had been right, there was no way she could defeat something like this, definitely not with the equipment she had access to. Just then the battleship, which had been charging its laser cannons, fired them at her, two big laser beams hitting her directly and knocking her flat on her back. The protective shield her bracelet granted her let her survive the hit but getting knocked back like that still hurt. She definitely wouldn't survive another blow like that, though, as right afterwards the bracelet beeped and said, Warning, device low on energy. Aww, 
nuts, Lix muttered, reaching over to her bracelet and quickly setting it to open up a portal back to her home world. She tapped the button and the portal opened up just as the battleship was preparing to fire again. Moving quickly, the giant axolotl jumped through at the portal closing behind her just in time for the huge laser beams to only hit the empty ground where it had just been. Goodness, that was, close, Lix panted as she stood in her garden, her heart beating terribly fast against her chest. Little by little she recovered from all the excitement, until at last she could breathe easy, the heavy humidity in the air slowly refreshing her dry skin. Finally she sighed and opened up the hand that had been holding the little Feringans. Is everyone okay? she asked, looking them over. They looked shaken and nervous, families clinging to each other for comfort and protection, their eyes wide in shock and terror, a few of them even hyperventilating, but they didn't seem to be hurt. We're fine, they said after a moment. I'm glad. Lick sat down on the grass and set the Feringans down between her legs. As she did, she noticed something fall from her soul, which on closer inspection she realized was another Feringan. Whoops. I forgot I had all these little stowaways, Lix said, gently passing a hand along her saws to rub off all those Feringans who had been stuck to them all this time all told. There had been almost a hundred of them stuck to her feet and they now lay on ground between her leg. Slowly getting up with the help of those who had come along willingly. Hi, little guys, Lix said, greeting them. Some of them were startled by her voice, but the others calmed them down and tried to assure them they were perfectly safe. I know you didn't choose to come along, but I hope you'll be happy staying here with all of us. Your home is a very dangerous place right now, and I promise you'll be much safer here. At first most of them seemed reluctant, but after listening to some of their fellow Feringans, they seemed to come around and accept her proposal. Great. I'm so happy I'll get to see all you little guys around the house from now on. I promise you'll be very comfortable with me. Now, just let me go find a little home for you all. A few days later, May hummed calmly to herself as she worked on her garden, watering the plants that were beginning to sprout, plants which she hoped would soon yield some of those curious purple fruits from which she had taken their seeds. Turning her head at the sound of children laughing, she saw her son playing with some other Feringan children and smiled. As much as everyone missed Feringa, they were all taking quite nicely to this new home of theirs. Barely a week had passed since they had moved in, and already many people were talking about wanting to stay even once the cruel masters of their people were finally kicked out of Feringa. It was definitely a much more comfortable place than their city had been, with a milder climate and better land for crops. Most importantly, they could all finally rest easy here, knowing they wouldn't be dragged from their beds in the middle of the night and jailed on suspicion of working against their overlords. As a shadow fell over her surroundings, May looked up with a smile at the person they all had to thank for all this. Lix peered into little glass terrarium she had set up for the Feringans to live in, standing tall and proud over them all. Hi there, cuties. I'm back with all your friends, come say hi to them, she said, setting her foot down on the little glass ceiling. Looking up, the Feringans inside saw her foot pressed against the glass with a few dozen of their kind pinned to it under her soul. All of them looking like they were really enjoying themselves. Jane, a little Feringan under Lick's big toe, shivered in delight at the contrast that the cool, hard glass beneath her made with the warm and soft soul at her back. The young Feringan had been one of the people brought to Lick's home by accident after getting stuck to the giantess's foot, and though she had been terrified of her at the time, she soon learned Lix was totally harmless if a bit playful. Now she adored her the same as everyone else. And she especially adored her feet, which she saw as her saviors for having gotten her out of Feringa. She would have loved to live on them if given the chance, but being able to spend time under them every once in a while was good enough for her. 
After wiggling her toes for a bit to tease all the Ferengans under them, Lix opened up the terrarium and carefully scraped her sole on the side of a wall, sending all the Ferengans on her foot falling down to land safely on a little hill at the edge of their little home. After checking her soul to make sure there was no one left, she knelt in front of the box and carefully picked it up, holding it up to her face to get a better look at the little people inside. Everyone okay, in there, she asked. Watching happily as those she had just wiped off stood and waved at her. We're okay, Lix. Jane yelled at the giantess. Thanks for the ride. And for our new home, another Ferengan chimed in. And for taking care of us. Thanks for being so kind. Thanks for rescuing us. You're great, Lix. We love you, Lix. Aww. You guys. You're welcome for all that stuff. Now come here, cuties. Lix pulled the terrarium close hugging it against her chest and gently rocking it from side to side. When she moved it away, she saw that a bunch of Ferengans had walked up to the glass wall that had been pressed against her chest and they were all hugging it, too. I'm so glad I went to your planet, even if I didn't find any leads on Ryung, if I hadn't gone, I wouldn't have helped all you little guys out. Man, I can't wait for Ryung to get back so I can introduce you all to her. She's really the best, I promise you'll all like her as much as me. Setting the little box back on the ground, Lix glanced around her garden and paused thoughtfully as her eyes stopped on some of the other terrariums she kept around. You know, she mused aloud, it's been really great having all you little cuties around. It's a lot of fun to feel you all under my feet every day. I wonder, maybe I can find some other people from other planets who want to come live with me too. That way I can have hundreds of little friends and you can have new neighbors to talk with. Lix looked back at the Ferengans. Anyways, it's been fun playing with you, but I have to leave now. Don't worry, I won't be away for long and we can play again once I'm back. I'm going to look for Ryung on another planet. Maybe when I get back I'll bring some new friends for you all to meet. Bye, she said, waving at them all. Goodbye, Lix, the Ferengans called out from their little box, waving back at their beloved caretaker. All right, let's see here, Lix thought to herself grabbing Ryung's list of planets. She quickly struck out the name Feringa from the list, then closed her eyes and moved her finger blindly along the page only opening them again once her finger came to a stop. Perfect, she said after reading the name of the planet she ended up pointing to. She slipped on a backpack in case there was anything, or anyone, she needed to bring back this time. Then, reaching for her bracelet device, now fully recharged, she entered the planet's coordinates and opened a portal to them. Lix took a deep breath to focus her resolve and then, Crossing her fingers in hopes that she'd at least find a clue as to Ryung's whereabouts this time, she jumped in, ready for whatever this new world might throw at her. And that was Lick's adventure in Faringa. We hope you enjoyed the story. The young axolotl giantess Lix is an original character from Cormene Media. The original story was written by Idano. The link is in the description. Subscribe to our channel for more stories. Of course we are very happy about a thumbs up or comments. Thanks for listening.